again, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here, and this is the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the most detailed forecast video you're going to find on the interwebs for Northeast Ohio and Western PA. We're going to quickly review what's happened over the last few days. We'll look forward to some big changes over the next couple of days, and we'll talk about the longer range in this video as well. Before that strong March sun did a real number on the snow today, this was the satellite picture taken this morning from a high from a high resolution low orbiting uh, satellite called MODIS and all this white, yeah that's the snow on the ground, not cloud uh, cover. And you know the lake effect uh, yesterday on Sunday pretty much behaved as expected. We had a few places around, oh, say, Cortland over to Southington up towards Mesopotamia. They got two or three inches, overachieving just a little bit, officially at the airport a little more than an inch. Well, as expected, once you got south of I-80, there wasn't a whole lot. You know, we're talking about uh, some random coatings here and there and a lot of Mahoning in Columbiana County, parts of Lawrence County as well. And, you know, it was one of those situations where it would coat the ground briefly and then the sun would pop out and just instantly it was gone. It just had all the makings of a, a, a classic March snow event with the, the sun as strong right now as it is during the first few days of October. So uh, unless it's really, really cold out, uh, the snow does not stand much of a chance in uh, at this time of the year. But despite getting a little bit of snow over the weekend, of course, we're way behind average for the season. We're going to finish in the top five or six, maybe seven or eight. Um, as far as uh, the least snowy winters on record, and last year was one of the least snowy, it was the second least snowy winter on record. We've had a little more this year, but only a little bit more. We're gonna finish the season with a pretty paltry number once again across our area. Boy, it'd be nice if we had today's weather coming up on April the 8th, a Monday, four Mondays from right now. It is the total solar eclipse, of course, and a day like today would be absolutely perfect. We couldn't ask for much more, maybe a little bit warmer, a little less breezy, but that crystal clear sky we had this afternoon will be fantastic if we have it on April the 8th. Here's just a list of uh, cities and how long they'll be in the path of totality. We'll be talking more and more about this, of course, over the next few weeks. So if you don't digest everything I say in this video, just watch it again or just pay attention to all our social media and videos over the next few weeks because, uh, of course, we're going to be hitting this pretty hard. But in our viewing area, of course, uh, the path of totality runs across extreme northwestern Mahoning, a good chunk of Trumbull, and kind of the northern and northwestern part of Mercer County. If you're in the rest of the area, Columbiana County, no one's in the path of totality in Columbiana County. Most of Mahoning is not in the path of totality with the exception of that northwestern part right around Craig Beach, Lake Milton area. Lawrence County, no totality, but you know, even in places uh, that aren't in the path of totality, this is still gonna be a 98%, 99% uh, eclipse, which is still cool, but the path of totality is where you want to be. In our viewing area, the place you really want to be is as far north in Trumbull as you can get. Mesopotamia, over three minutes of totality. Cleveland's in that area of max totality. So in that stripe uh, near Cleveland and off to the south and west towards Lima and into western Ohio, there'll be a good three and a half minutes or so worth of totality on April the 8th. It'd be a great uh, day for an eclipse in most of the country today, with the exception of the west coast getting slammed. Otherwise, it's quiet across the lower 48 states this evening. It's going to stay that way uh, tonight. And I'm going to show you this because I'm recording this video at 7.07. It's still light outside, of course, with the return of daylight saving time on Sunday. Our sunset this evening pretty close to 7.30. Um, and we will continue, of course, gaining daylight right up until June 21st. Uh, it's a bummer in the mornings that it's darker later, but that's just temporary, of course, with uh, us gaining about two, 2 minutes and 40 seconds worth of daylight per day. The uh, pre-7 uh, a.m. sunrises will be back in just a few weeks. In the meantime, another winter coming our way on Wednesday, just as nice as today. In fact, quite a bit warmer than today, not as breezy as today. That was still kind of a, a pesky or snappy wind out there today. The sunshine felt nice and temperatures were sure better than Sunday, but you know, the, the breeze wasn't great. Uh, what a great day we have coming up on Tuesday. Just some fair weather clouds around this next uh, cold front, just sort of meanders around and just sort of dissipates really doesn't really have much oomph to it so we're in good shape through Wednesday now this more substantial system on Thursday will start to spread clouds our way and maybe there's a shower by the end of the afternoon on Thursday probably more likely to see raindrops as this uh, slowly pushes through Thursday night heading into Friday and early Friday night as well all right longer range thoughts as we go towards St. Patrick's Day and beyond uh, all systems go for a pattern change we think at the uh, uh, during the upcoming weekend and beyond that, so my graphic here does not want to display uh, the things it should be displaying. So let's let's find the graphic I wanted to show you actually. 
Uh, I'll tell you what. We'll just we'll just skip it. And I'll just verbally <laughs> talk about what I was going to talk about. Uh, this weekend, a cool down starts. It takes us into next week with highs mostly in the 50s and 40s even. Uh, there might even be a day or two next week where we struggle to get out of the 30s. Um, now, that being said, the jury is still out on how long a cooler pattern sticks around. Uh, but the bottom line is we're pretty confident that you know the second half of March and perhaps into a good chunk of April will not be as consistently crazy warm as the last month or so. You know, we've racked up enormous departures from average temperature-wise in February and early March. We're not going to see that the end of March and into April. Does that mean it's going to be real cold? No. Does that mean we're going to have a lot of late-season snow? No, not necessarily. Um, but it will just not be as consistently blowtorchy um, as it has been. Now, of course, our averages are rising quickly at this time of the year, so a below-average day at the end of March and early April is a high in the mid-50s. Um, and so, you know, the takeaway from this video, even though my graphic uh, kind of failed on us there, um, cooler days are ahead, but I don't see anything real crazy in terms of any sort of uh, abnormal late season cold, aside from maybe a day or two here and there where we struggle to get out of the 30s. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. I'll see you right back here, same time, same place, on Tuesday.